What's up everyone, welcome back to another episode of AWS Tutorial and today I'll show you how to build a system that automatically detects fang stock dips and then notify you when that happens. I actually have this system running for myself right now and the reason why I built this is that based on my experience, fang stocks or other valuable companies in this regard, whenever they drop more than like 8-10%, to they always bounce back to higher than the previous high and it happens multiple times throughout the year. In my opinion, I think when this happens, it might be a good buying opportunity. But then on the other hand, I don't want to keep looking at these stocks every day to see if they drop below a certain threshold. And that's why I built this system to notify me when this happens. But one thing I have to say beforehand is that this video is for educational purposes only. I'm not advising or suggesting anyone to buy anything here. And with that being said, let's build a system together. Alright, so right now I'm on the homepage of the AWS console. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to create an IAM role for the Lambda function to use so that it has access to CloudWatch for the logs and then also has access to SES so that you can send email to ourselves to notify us. So I'm going to type in IAM. Hit roles. And then create row. We're going to choose Lambda. Hit next. We're going to attach two policies to it. One is the cloud watch flow permission. And then the other one is SES for permission as well. Hit next, next, give it a name. I'll just call it dip notification row. Hit create. Okay, so it's done. And now let's create a Lambda function. I hit create. I just call it stock dip notification. We're going to use Node.js and then permissions. We're going to use the role that we just created. Is that one? And then we're going to hit create. One thing I'm going to do here is to change the timeout because the default timeout for the Lambda function is only three seconds. And when we retrieve data for all the stocks we have on the list, it may take more than that. So I'm going to increase the timeout to maybe 30 seconds. So I'm going to hit configure under general configuration. Hit edit, 30 seconds. Hit save. Okay, so now we're ready to write a code for the Lambda to detect the dip and send us email when that, when that happens. Okay, so now I have VS Code open, a empty folder called Tutorial. Um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a file called package.json. And in here, we're going to have a name for it. Let's call it stock dip notification version. Let's call it 1.0.0 author. Let's go Felix U. And then dependencies. We are going to use two libraries here. One is Yahoo Finance that we're going to get the stock data from. And I think that's the latest version. And then the other module we're going to use is called Moment Time Zone that we're going to use to build our date strings. And that is the latest version as well. And then next, we're going to create our index.js file for our Lambda code. First thing first, we're going to import the two modules that we just defined in our package.json. Yahoo Finance and the moment module. And then we're going to define our fang stock list. I think F is for Facebook, Apple, Amazon, and I know N stands for Netflix, but I personally don't like Netflix stocks that much. So I'm going to swap that with Microsoft instead. And then lastly, we have Google. You can put other stocks that you're interested in this list as well. Um, it doesn't have to be the FANG stocks, but the, this is just my list. And then we're going to define our maximum dip percent for us to get notified. Um, I just use 
10%, but you can choose whatever percentage that you want. And then we're going to use the moment library to define today's state and tomorrow's state. What is the typo here? Moment. So today's date is going to be moment time zone. I'm just going to use the US Eastern time time zone, but you can choose the one that you want based on your area. And then we want to have the format to be year, month, and day. And then do the same thing for tomorrow. Same time zone and format, except we're going to add one more day to it. And I'm going to explain why we need to have two dates here uh, later on when we actually have the implementation. And now we're ready to define our handler for the Lambda function. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to get the list of stocks that actually dipped below this threshold. We use await here because this function is going to be an async function that we're going to define later on. And then we're going to check if the list is not empty. We're going to send email to ourselves. And again, this is an async function that we're going to define later. All right, now let's define this function first. We're going to instantiate stock info list as an empty list. And then we're going to have a for loop that goes through the fang stocks. Fang stocks that we define here. We're going to first get a price history. This function takes in a symbol, which is just the stock. And then from today date to tomorrow date. And the reason why we want to get a historical data from today to tomorrow is that we only want the current price of today. And if we define it this way, it will only return one object to us, which is today's, today's data. And we're just going to get the first one. And the next, we're going to get the stock summary. And from this parameter, we're going to get the 52 week high. So first we're going to get the current price, price history, take the first index. And then we're going to get the adjusted close price from that. And then we're going to get the all time high. And then we're going to calculate the percent dip. We're going to use the current price minus the all time high and then divide it by the all time high times 100. And then we're going to check if the percent dip is higher than the maximum percent dip that we defined earlier, which is here 10%. And if it is higher, we're going to push that into our stock info list. So we're going to do stock info list dot push and we're going to push that as an object we're going to have ticker which is just the stock ticker and then we have the current price attribute and then all time high attribute and then lastly we're going to have the percent dip as well and after the for loop we're just going to return the stock info list okay so this function is done and now we're going to define the send email function Before we get into the details of send email, let's import some module first. The first one is the AWS module, AWS SDK, and then we're going to set the region to be US East 1. And that's because my Lambda function is in the US East region, and my email is also registered in the US East 1 region under SES. Let me show you. So SES. Yes. 
So this is the email address that I'm going to use to send and receive email in the Lambda function, and that is in the US East 1 region. So in order to send and receive emails, you have to verify your email in here. If you haven't done that already, you can click on verify new email address, enter it, and then hit this button, and then you should get an email from Amazon within a few seconds. You can just click on the link, and that makes the email verified, and you can see the status right here. So let's go back. And then we're going to define the SES client to be that. And then we're going to define the email sender. This is going to be your email address. And then email receivers. And this is going to be the email that will be receiving the notification. You can have more than one email in the uh, receiver email list. It will just mean that more people will get the notification. But for me, I just have the same email here because I want to send my email to myself. But one thing you have to make sure is that all the emails here, either the sender or the receivers, they have to be verified under your SES account here. So now let's write a function. First, I'm going to have a param. I'm going to have a source for the sender. So email sender in here. And then I have the destination, which is an object that I have a two addresses attribute, which is the email sender or receiver. And the next, I'm going to have a message object. And inside, we're going to have a subject for the email. Char set UTF 8. And then data, we're going to say And the next after subject is the body, which is also an object. Where we're going to have text, the char set, UTF-8 as well. And then the data, we're going to say two new lines. And then we're going to stringify the stock list. And then finally, we're going to say something like it's from Melinda, something like that. Okay, so the param is ready. Now we're going to use it. So we're going to do await SES send email param promise dot then. And we're just going to cancel doc, log out something like. But then if we have an error, we're just going to catch that and cancel dot log it out and say something like, okay, so it's done. Before we can test it, one thing to note here is none of this stock on the list is below 10% of the all time high in the last 52 weeks. So we're not going to pass this condition. So we have to add one to it that has the current price is lower than 10% of the all time high. So let's just add Boeing to it because I know it dropped below 10%. And then I'm going to change that to my email address. Same address here. Okay, and now let's open a terminal and install the two modules that we'll be using. Just to npm install. All right, so it's done. All right, before we deploy the code to the Lambda function, I actually found a few mistakes in the code. So I'm going to fix it right now. The first one is a typo here. It should be moment time zone. And then the second thing is that I spelled my email wrong. So I'm going to fix it here. And then the last one is that I'm making this video on a weekend. So it doesn't have any stock data for today's date. So we're going to expand the date range to a few days ago. Let's say five days ago. You could a moment. We're going to add negative five days. And then in here, we're going to use five days ago date. And for the list of data that it returns, the first index is still the most recent date one. So we don't have to change anything here. And I think that is it. Uh, so now let's go to the directory, this directory in the folder, and then zip up these two items. And then now let's go back to the AWS console, go to the Lambda function, hit code, 
and then upload from and then upload the zip file that we just zipped up hit save now hit test test all right so it's successful all right so it's successful send an email oh you may want to string the fighters and within a few seconds you should be getting an email so let me just log into my gmail and yep you should be getting an email that looks like this and if I open that I just hit look safe and you get all the information about the stock that did more than the maximum percentage that is specified and if you don't get that check your spam folder it may go there for some reason alright so now we have it working the next thing that we have to do is that we have to create a CloudWatch rule that triggers the Lambda function once a day so that we know that if we miss the requirement that day and then we can decide to buy or not to buy in the next day so I'm going to go to CloudWatch I'll type in CloudWatch and then under event I have rules and then I'll create rule I'll hit schedule uh, we're going to use cron so the time system here is UTC um, so I'm going to do every day at 11 p.m. UTC uh, during weekdays which is 7 p.m. Eastern time but you can um, choose your own time if you want to alright so the next time it's going to trigger is that UTC 11 p.m. on Monday which is 7 p.m. on Monday for me I'm going to include a link down below where you can see the reference on how you can set up different times based on your preference in the description down below and the next I'm going to add trigger and that's the lambda function that we just defined and then configure detail I give it a name I'll just call it stock dip trigger enable and then create rule and that should be everything so this is how it's going to work so on every weekday at 7 p.m. US Eastern Time this CloudWatch trigger is going to trigger this lambda function and this lambda function is going to get the data and if one of the stocks on the list drops below its previous high more than the percentage that you specify it's going to call SES to send out an email to you to notify you that it's happening and you will get an email that looks like this if that happens and this is it everyone I hope you have learned something and if you like this video, I hope you can give it a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next video.